Hi, as I stated in the Cartoon Setup movie, um, I have set up a file with four different examples. I'll separate these into four movies, the first one being the same one that I set you up with in the Cartoon Setup movie. Um, I have a clicky copy, which is just a copy of the template that is not dimmed, and we're going to get started right away. Um, each of these is to show you how simple it is to actually set up let me click to his hat layer and lock everything else up as I've already said to do in class and I wrote in the assignment guide to lock everything up but the thing you're working on. So I've created a hat layer, an arm, a shoe, and a leg layer for the other movies but we'll work on the hat layer and I'm only going to do the hat um, beyond or behind him here um, and this would be the bottom layer uh, as I stated in the PDF file. I'll bring that up real fast here so I can show you. We're going to do this one that I have set up here as number six, um, which is the bottom layer. So um, if you look over here to the right, it's actually um, the layer that's behind his face. So we're going to be setting up that one, which I believe I've already done down here. And hopefully we will get to something that looks just like this. If you look here on the right hand side, we're going to set it up with um, doing the center lines, um, converting the rectangle, doing the center lines, putting in the top, bottom, left, and right lines as you see on screen, and then we actually go to the next step after we duplicate the layers and we finish off the file. So there's the wireframe version of it, there's the real version of it, wireframe version, real version. Here is how you set up the rectangle. Um, initially you set it up to where the tones are changing on the same kind of angle so you can um, have your grid lines match the tone then you move the corners in as I have done over here and then you proceed so let's do this realistically in front of you as I am going to start so I'm going to take the M key and we're going to draw with a no fill and a stroke for now so I can take this and just do a box that's about the size of his head. Then I hit the E key and I turn this and I put it in about the right direction letting the borders touch as best you can um, the edge of the shape. Uh, and, and that's pretty good right there. Um, I can't zoom in. I've got my screen resolution so big that I can't zoom in real good at times but let me whoops let me just put this here well that worked out real well let me put this here and see if I can zoom in like this okay there we go that's fine and now I'm going to show you by um, taking the clicky copy I'm gonna remove the stroke I'm gonna bring the fill to the front and you gotta leave the fill in the front when you're using the U key so let's take the clicky copy turn it on hit I for the eyedropper and fill this with a medium value now you can see how I filled that with a medium value now in order to do the lines you have two choices to do the grid lines you can leave the clicky copy on and then take your U key and start clicking the sides here or you can turn the clicky copy off and hold the command key and wireframe the layer you're on so you can see how I've wireframed the hat layer letting the template layer guide me in the tone so here are the two center lines right there and there and now our job is to hold the command key down oh good you can see how the command key remember I'm in the U key which is the grid tool the gradient mesh tool and I um, want to toggle my command key well it's the wrong selection tool so I have to go A key then U key so the command key is the correct selection tool so now let's move this into about the right area I'm gonna try to save every five seconds so that um, should this quit I can just restart this movie and go to that point so let's now move this about right here let's take this and let's start with this one this one's gonna move approximately down here this one's gonna move and they usually move almost like a 45 degree line uh, or 45 degree angle into the shape that you want um, and this doesn't have to be something perfect you can alter as you go um, meaning you can take these grid lines if they're not perfect right away and you can alter them to the shape as you see fit. Remember to try to get these handlebars here horizontal. That's kind of an important issue here because if you don't get them horizontal then it's not going to work. Now this tone change that's going to work its way where I'm 
kind of angling, I'm going to turn the clicky copy on. Whoops. I'm going to turn the clicky copy on and I'm going to show you that that should probably move down just a little bit. So this should move more here so that I can do this tone change that goes this way. Look how I can angle that up. I can take the center line and angle that up. And now I can take this angle and make it come up like that. And look at how nicely I have made that center line work. Now let's fix both of these in this way. Let's move this one up just a little bit and then fix this one. And this is what takes the time. But once you get your geometry right on the center lines and the top line, look at how I'm retracting the handlebar so I don't have any, any bad intersections of lines or overlapping of lines. Now, um, that one, which is the top corner, probably should go right here in this one to make it more convenient for the shape. So I'm going to get close to that. And I'm going to show you that let's now fix this edge. So now look at how nice I can make this go down. I can make this go in. Now let's push this one in just a little bit. It's probably time to save the file. So if it quits, I don't have to start over again. My goal is that I do four of these movies, each not taking longer than 10 or so minutes, so that you can get the idea by me doing multiple shapes, just how easy this process can be. Um, and it just takes practice, that's all. So now look at how I've taken my geometry. Notice how the, the as I said before, the hat shape is going to be, see I can barely see where that is. So I'm gonna turn this, turn, I did it again, I held the command key. Turn off the clicky copy so I can hold the command key and get at that shape. And then make this a nice piece of geometry which doesn't have any bad corners. Now, a little bit more fix here. Let's take this and just move it up just a little bit. And now that's pretty good. That's a good definition of that shape, okay? Now, I can start the coloring process if I want to here. So I'm gonna hit Command S to save the file. Even before I get the top, bottom, left and right lines in, let's turn on the clicky copy, hit the eyedropper, and let's go click all of these points and let's start the coloring process even though I don't have many lines in there. That color should go to approximately here. This bottom color should go right there. This bottom color, remember, I'm only doing the back of the hat. So this should go here. This color should go here. This color right there should go right near where it's supposed to be. This one should go right there. This one should go, I'm gonna get zoom in. This one should go right there. Let me zoom out. Let me click this one. Now what color should go there? about that color right here. So now when I click away from this after I save the file, let me zoom in nicely here. Oh, I did it again. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit closer. Okay, move it over and now let's turn off the clicky copy and you can see if I unwireframe the hat layer by holding the command key, I have a pretty decent color. I'm saving the file now again. Now it's time to duplicate the shape because I, I really could put in the top, bottom, left and right lines, but it's time to show you that you should duplicate the shape once you've got it to this point so you don't have to start over. Now make sure you lock and hide the bottom shape. Now quickly, let's turn on the clicky copy, take the U key and put in the top line. I want it about right here. First I'm going to put in the left line, uh, the right line. I know my right and my left, I promise. Let's move this up so there's no bad intersection. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's turn off the clicky copy. Let's make sure that there's no bad intersection. I'm going to wireframe the, the hat layer by holding the command key. You have to make sure that all of your grid lines make sense. Okay, now let me pull this out a little bit like this. Now look at how there's no bad intersection or overlapping. This would be bad. This is not bad at all because I can use that. Now that's my left line. Let me um, unwireframe the shape, turn on the clicky copy, and let's now put the top line right where the light value should go, right there. Now that's going to make me actually fix this. This one is up too high. So what I have to do now is, as I told you, re-edit the shape. This one should move down. Watch how easily I fix the outer line. Okay, back to normal. Let's retract the handlebars. Okay, that's good. And now look at how I've fixed that pretty geometry to go more in the um, angles that it is. And this one's fine on top. Okay, let's do the bottom line. The bottom line, not down here because that's not needed. The bottom line should go more exactly what I just did here. Right there, that's almost perfect. Let's turn this off, 
hold the command key and wireframe this because I want to take this one and move it right up to where the top of the rim is. So let's take this one, look at how nicely I've retracted the handlebars and move it right up here. Now this one right there has to move up just a tiny bit before I move it up. I retract the handlebars so I get no intersection of line, meaning I don't want that handlebar to go over that grid line or it'll pull that color up too high. Now all I have to do is move this up and there are my top and bottom, my right line, and I don't have the left line in there right now. So I'm going to go like this and let's just put a left line in there so I can color the whole hat. Now let's just fix the geometry so it's got pretty, um, and I call it pretty, I, I guess I should call it visually pleasing, aesthetically pleasing lines so that any other grid lines I put in actually do the job. Now. This is where I have top, bottom, left, right, center lines in. When I finish coloring this, guess what? I duplicate the shape. So I have to unwire frame that. This is bothering me that it's not nicely perfect there. Let's turn on the clicky copy. Let's hit the eyedropper and let's color all of this. One, let's color here, goes over to here. This color right there goes behind that label right there. This color again goes about here. This color goes about right there. This one, let's get really close and let's grab that light color. Now let's move over. I'm going to get close. Let's, um, in the eyedropper, you know you can hold the command key to click the point, let go and eyedrop. Hold the command key, click the point, let go to eyedrop. Hold the command key, click the point, let go to eyedrop, and so on and so on and so on. Now, I'm going to color the outer lines again just to make sure that they're the right colors because I have kind of moved these if you recall. Let's go here and color those. Now I'm going to hit Command S to save the file. I don't have the hat layer wireframe so as soon as I click away you should be able to see really good hat solution. Now I'm going to turn it off so I can turn the clicky copy on. Let me get as close as I can comfortably. Now let's turn the clicky copy on and off so you can see if I've done a good job. All right, I've done a pretty decent job, but I have to go lighten up where I'm circling in yellow. Well, currently I have no grid line right there to lighten up in yellow. And I got to curve this edge a little bit more and I think I need more color as I'm moving up and down here. So you duplicate the shape. Remember to lock and hide the shape. Save the file. Now let's go without worrying about ruining this one because I already have a nice copy of it. Hey, I would even go so far as to say safe. Now copy number two and this is my safe copy number one just to have it so I can throw those away if I want to later. But I have them so I don't have to start over. Turn this on. Let's take the Yuki. Let's click a grid line right here. Let's click a grid line right here and let's click a grid line right on the edge. Now look at how nice the geometry went in. I don't even have to alter the geometry. All I have to do now is go color the points. So um, let's take um, and hit the eyedropper and let's go click this one and now look at how nicely I can take all of this and click the yellows that are right nearby. In fact, I'm going to move this one out just a bit so I can get it closer to the edge. There's no reason for me to go move all the lines because you know that the little white label is going to cover up anything underneath that. So now let's move over. Let's get all the nice colors that are, I'm just eye dropping. Remember it's the eyedropper. Hold the command key. Click the point like I just did. Let's get close so you can see this on screen. Click the point. Whoops. Click the point or click the color. Click the point. Let go. Click the color. Command key to click the point. Let glow and click, click the color. I have a little, I think you can see it. I have a little bad piece of geometry happening right there. Do you see the grid line that's going out of the system? I need to take this one right here. Lessen the handlebars. Look at how I'm not going to panic. I'm going to move this one over a little farther. Then I'm going to take this one and go below the shape. And now look at how I have fixed the geometry to make that work. There's no bad intersection of color. Now, so there's nothing bad there, meaning I'm going to color both of these points. I held them with the shift key and I'm going to click both of those to the same color. So I should get no bad intersection of points. So this one goes to the green. Look at how nice this follows the light green tone. I'll even move this one a little bit out towards the edge of the hat. 
just like this. Now let's click this one here. Let's make sure we click the right point here, the correct point. Let's click this one there. Now that should be enough. If I've missed, then I'll go recolor. Let's back off just a little bit more. Now save the file, turn off the clicky copy, and you should have a pretty decent hat. Now let's turn on the clicky copy and let's see. Okay, this one point, look at this is where we have to edit. This one point right there, that one, is too dark. So let's go turn on the clicky copy and brighten up that point, turn it off, and see how we did. Now, all I have to do, I'm not quite sure about these three. So let's click this one. Let's lighten up the point again. Let's click this one. I'll go to this side of the point. Then let's click this one, and I'll go to this side of the point. Now that should be a much better resolution. Look at how much softer that looks. Now let's turn on the clicky copy and let's see how that looks. That's really beautiful. I think I've done a nice job. Look at how that tone comes right through here. Look at how that nice bright tone comes right through here just like it does on the clicky copy and I've got that perfect. So let's go on to shape number two so you can see the same thing happen. Remember, I'm going to turn these off and on first. Let's um, unlock these. Here's the first one and there's the mesh. Here's the second one, and there's the mesh lines. Here's the third one, and here's the mesh lines. So every single time that I've done this, I have saved my safe SAFE copies, and I have colored as I go with the eyedropper. I'll see you in movie two for the other shape. This is actually going to be movie three, but that, the setup movie's number one. I'll just call the setup movie the setup movie, then this is number one, then I'll do three more, so I'll see you in movie two.